Hi everybody, I'm Ryan. Today we're going to run Legacy Reanimator through a league. Now from this past week's metagame analysis, Reanimator was the third most popular deck among winning decks in Legacy. And it's a deck I've dabbled with here and there. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump in. I'm going to do a really quick deck tech so you guys know what's going on with the deck. And then we're going to run through a league that I did. Analyze mistakes, analyze misplays, and analyze what's like going good with the deck and, and decision making. So let's do it. So this is Reanimator. Um, I like dividing this deck into a couple different categories. Um, number one's Mana Makers. So you have your lands and Lotus Petal and Dark Ritual. These cards actually make like the combo faster and allows for like turn one putting your your big dumb guys like Archon of Cruelty and Grizzlebrand on the battlefield, which is extremely, extremely good and just speeds up what you're trying to do. The next category we kind of have here is uh, Disruption. Uh, obviously, combo decks like this uh, die really, really hard to Force of Oil and Days and, and things like that. Um, so we have four Unmask, four Grief, and two Thoughtseize uh, to interrupt what our opponent is doing. Now we have Big Dumb Guys to put in the graveyard in Grizzlebrand and Archon of Cruelty, which are two of the best reanimation targets. We have ways to put them in the graveyard with Faithless Looting and Entomb. And of course, you can unmask yourself and thought seize yourself. You can't actually grief yourself to put anything in the graveyard, though. And then we have ways to reanimate it in reanimate, animate dead, and exhume. And the deck is just all about putting these cards onto the battlefield. Now, I go into more detail in my deck tech. You should check that out on my channel. But that's essentially what this deck is trying to do. So let's jump into the league. So this hand is totally good, right? It has disruption. Um, we can put Archon of Cruelty into the graveyard. We can animate it. You know, this is exactly what we want to be doing. You know, they just go Volcanic Island, so it's probably Delver. You know, that's that's okay, especially with disruption in our hand. All right, so we disrupt. We see Force of Will and Daze, so we kind of have to play it slow. We take Force of Will, hope they don't draw another thing, and faithlessly loot this stuff away however we hit dark ritual um, but they have days so they can daze the dark ritual I decide to wait one more turn get rid of our land that is totally okay because next turn we can burn catacombs dark ritual uh, because the only interaction we know about is days we can even choose to put grizzlebrand on the battlefield if we want to it gets a minor misstep which is really rough draw for us um, we're still totally fine. We really want to land, though, so that uh, Animate Dead doesn't get countered or anything. Kind of just decide to pass the turn. That minor misstep was like crazy, crazy for our opponent. I'm not even sure if it's that good in Legacy, but it was definitely good there. And Step in Tomb, maybe... You know, bait the days on it. No, we didn't. But we now we have Grizzlebrand in our graveyard. It's totally fine. We hit the Lotus Petal, which means we can fight through the days. Uh, we exhume, and then they concede because we get them on the battlefield. This is going to happen a lot. Um, a lot of concessions just, like, before they, we start doing craziness at all. So now we're up a game against Delver. Um, this hand's okay because we have the Faithless Looting. Um, especially with the Chancellor of the Annex. We sided in Chancellor of the Annex because it can really, like, mess with the, our opponent's Force of Wills. And a lot of their, like, early tempo plays. Um, especially if we can reanimate it and put it onto the battlefield. But Faithless Looting really needs to hit either a reanimate or another, um, or another mana source. Um, the chance of the Annex trigger hits Delver of Secrets, which we feel okay with. It gives us a little bit of time. We do our Faithless Looting thing. We hit the reanimate, and we have Disruption and Thoughtseize. Like, we're, we're totally fine. We probably even grab Chance of the NX and not Crystal Brand. I'm not really sure. Um, stuff gets Wastelanded. And we even hit the Lotus Petal for the days here, which feels really, really good. Um, so we Thoughtseize first, hit the Force of Will, and then reanimate. Uh, choose Grizzlebrand, and then our opponent concedes. We are 1 and 0. Oh. Yay, Reanimator! So this hand's a little awkward because we have to Thought Seize ourselves to put the Grizzlebrand in the graveyard, but then we have two Reanimates. So uh, I actually decided to keep this hand um, going, into game, going into game 1 of round 2 at 1 and 0. Oh. Um, we have to do the Thought Seize ourselves situation. 
They let it resolve. We play the Grizzle Branch is the graveyard. And then we reanimate. We draw a bunch of cards with Grizzle Brand. We're at two, which is a little awkward, but then we have like Grief and Unmask, and then we win. Um, so we did the thing. So we thought to use ourselves, played the Lotus Petal, reanimated Grizzle Brand, drew seven cards with Grizzle Brand. And then what's awesome about that is you often draw into like Grief and Unmask and these, these or even more Lotus Petals. And you can continue doing crazy stuff. Um, and they were Grief and Unmask. And our opponent conceded before we could see their hand, so we couldn't really sideboard. So this hand is, we're in kind of a similar situation. I wish we had one of these lands was another black card so we could unmask first, um, like our opponent and disrupt our opponent before we have to thought seize ourselves. But this is like, okay, like we're okay with it. And it looks like snow covered swamp means it's like the, the probably the mono black, like um, weirdness deck, uh, you know, pseudo reanimator situation which is really bad for me because I didn't sideboard for this at all. And it means we have to uh, try really hard to reanimate as soon as we put the thing in the graveyard, which we do not have the ability to right now because Exum got, um, got gone. We're just filtering lands out of our deck. We cast Unmask for retail. Hit a grief, sure. Unfortunately, we have Grizzlebrand in our graveyard now, and I know our opponent's deck runs reanimate. Um, so now it's just kind of like draw, go, which is totally like a, a part of this reanimated deck. You saw the free wins the deck can get. But also, like, the deck just has, like, does nothing a lot of the time. We're going to continue doing nothing. Oh, we hit the exhume. However, they have an Archon of Cruelty in their graveyard, which means you can't really exhume because we just like go like exhume, Grizzlebrand hits, hits the bin. I have to sack my Grizzlebrand to Archon. Like, it's possible I was supposed to exhume there because we can, I can like draw seven cards off the Grizzlebrand thing and hope it's good enough. But I don't know. It's, that, that's such a tough call. And then now it's too late. Now, now my life total is just going to be too low and I I'm, I'm, can't, can't do it. I, I think they are my only chance was to exhume earlier. Um, and now they have another creature, so I can't just like have both Archons hit the hit the battlefield. Um, yeah, I think my only chance was to exhume, draw a bunch of cards off of Grizzlebrand, and then he animates my Grizzlebrand, and it's just so over. So ridiculously over. I'm just filtering. Hit nothing. And we're done. So this opening hand, obviously, I can't cast anything besides, you know, the grief or whatever. So we have to mulligan. Mulligan into not so good. So we mulligan again. And then this hand's, like, fine. We can entomb and then dark ritual re uh, animate dead. So, like, you know, we keep. You also have the fairy macabre. Uh, which is kind of good because our opponent likes doing the that kind of stuff to you. So, okay, so let's see if we can turn one. And we are able to turn one. And yay, go us. Unmask our opponent, make sure no craziness happens. Uh, I unmask their grief and then attempt to reanimate their grief with the Lotus Petal uh, to try to take their more, more stuff. And we get more stuff on the battlefield and they just concede to that. So we are 2-0. and so this opener is, man, is so rough. Uh, I did decide to put it away into definitely a, a better opener. We actually have a turn one here where we Dark Ritual Thought Seize Ourself, uh, you know, Animate Dead or Reanimate, which is kind of sweet. I uh, put away one of the Dark Rituals. We don't need both. Um, and they hit Painter's Servant and go Goblin Welder. Uh, that is okay for us because I don't think they have interaction unless they're playing the blue version. Which I don't think Goblin Welder's played in the blue version, actually, now that I think about it. Thought Seize Ourself, hit Archon, Animate Dead. We get Turn 1 Archon of Cruelty, which is pretty good, I hear. And then we also draw the Unmask off the Archon, which they concede to. Great, up a game in round 3. So this hand's totally fine, because we have a turn 2 Animate Dead. And we get to Entomb at the end of our opponent's turn, then Animate Dead. So, you know, we love that. And they turn 1 License Hearse, which is uh, a nightmare scenario for us. Draw Faithless Looting, see if we can draw into uh, anything. But, you know, we're we're in a bad situation. 
and I don't even know how to narrate over this because, like, you know, our opponent's going to take forever to kill us. Uh, we sided into Artifact Hate, so we just need to draw aggressively into Artifact Hate. You know, that's just where we're at. Flashback Faithless Looting, we're just trying to draw into our Artifact Hate. You know, we have them to zero cards, so that's pretty good. However, that Urza Saga is really rough. You know, they even make constructs, and we're we're just so dead. We're just so ridiculously dead. Like even if we draw the artifact hate now, uh, and and actually, so he brings back a painter servant, which means like Urza Saga sacrifice at the grindstone, and then you win. Um, I think they're yeah, they even have the mana, so we just lose. Going to game three. This hand uh, is barely not good enough. Like I'm okay with keeping uh, like no land lotus petal hands, dark ritual hands, but the only way to put stuff in our graveyard. It's Faithless Looting, and we don't have a reanimation target, so we have to put it away. And this hand is, like, okay. Because we can unmask, exiling Dark Ritual, unmask ourselves, put Grizzlebrand in the graveyard, play a land, Dark Ritual, animate dead Grizzlebrand. So, like, let's, it just has to be good enough, though. Like, if you have any interaction, we're in trouble because we can't use the interaction for our opponent. We have to do the, the high variance thing, which this is a high variance deck. And they have Fairy Macabre. So now we have zero cards in hand and everything's awful. Welcome to Reanimator, friends. All right, now we just get to play Drago while our opponent does things. Grab Goblin Engineer, Paint a Servant. I mean, sometimes they just they just have the interaction, and it is what it is, you know. Super high variant strategy. So they don't have the third land um, or another artifact to Goblin Engineer the Painter Servant, but like it's really only a matter of time. And I'm just like getting flooded with a 14 land deck, which is a little weird. So really, they're, they're, they're like a land and an artifact away from killing us, which is brutal. Serenity's okay. Um, it takes two turns for them to kill us in any sense. Um, but then they draw the Painter Servant, which is really rough. Um, so I, I have to play the Serenity this turn and then hope they don't see a third land. But they do, and then we die. Um, I maybe should have played the Serenity before, but the issue is with Goblin Engineer, like Serenity doesn't do a lot against Goblin Engineer specifically, so I don't know. I I, I don't think there was any way to win there. Because if I Serenity the turn before, like Grindstone goes away, sure, and then they just like go Painter Servant and then just like wait on Urza Saga and I still lose. So I, I it's, it, yeah. But we are two and one. Uh, this Sands is very, very good, right? We get to just turn one Dark Ritual, Entomb, Animate Dead. Like, it's a turn one uh, situation, which we love, especially on the play. We just got to hope it's good enough. Dark Ritual, Entomb, Grizzly B, Animate Dead, and it resolves. Let's go. Draw seven cards. Do even more cool things. Grief our opponent. Our opponent even lets us grief them, so there it's initiative. I actually think I I remember misplaying a couple times in this, um, in this matchup. I I don't think it was in game one though. So, but I want to explain my misplays. I got a misclick even in in game two. So they go Caracas on Grizzlebrand, which is really annoying, but is like totally fine. You know, we just we can just kill being the initiative deck, right? Uh, faithlessly loot. Putting Archon into our graveyard, which means next turn we get to exhume uh, Archon of Cruelty. Keep exhume on top with the Explore from Season Dungeoneer. All right, we get to just basically I'm just taking removal out of my opponent's hand with um, with the unmask trap. We're just trying to kill our opponent. We're we're the initiative deck now, All right? We even have exhume here. Right, the game the game's just over. Right, just put our kind of cruelty and another our kind of cruelty into our graveyard with that season dungeoneer, uh, and then the game's over with the exhum. Uh, this hand 
just does nothing, so we have to mulligan it. Um, and then this hand also does nothing, so we have to mulligan it. This hand uh, actually does something, right? Because you can unmask yourself, put Grizzlebrand in the graveyard, Lotus Petal, reanimate. Okay, so good for me. So we put two cards on the bottom. The issue is... Um, I think I misclicked what cards I put on the bottom here, right? I I I misclicked Grizzlebrand, um, which means that this hand does nothing now. Good for me. Now I need a land for it to function. Actually, and he plays Chalice of the Void, and I just concede to Chalice of the Void because this this hand can't be Chalice of the Void. Yay! I also didn't sideboard an artifact hate. So like, really the um. Like that last game, really, the misclick didn't matter because um, the, it, my hand couldn't beat Chalice of the Void anyway, but it still like feels really bad to misclick like that. And then I think I had a misplay in this game too. I can't remember. So this like barely isn't good enough. We need more mana sources. So we mulligan. We have no way to reanimate here, but I decide to keep it because we have Faithless Looting. It's possible I should have put that back. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but we can faithlessly loot, put Grizzlebrand in the graveyard, and we just we run a million copies of of stuff. So it's possible I should have just thought seized there with the Lotus Petal. I don't know. Right to make sure that they couldn't play their their thing, especially with like the the knowledge of Chalice of the Void existing. Um, and especially with the knowledge of Chalice of the Void existing, put uh, looting the Lotus Petal away um, was probably wrong. Oh no, I remember what I did wrong in this game. Yeah. Yeah, so we're playing draw go because I can't really cast anything because of Chalice of the Void. Now we're in a situation where if we draw a land or a Lotus Petal, like playing both griefs, pretty good. You know, an Exum is a good draw, an Animate Dead is a good draw. Like we are not out of this game, uh, especially with them missing a whole bunch of, in a row. Hit a land and still don't play anything, so we're like, okay, all right, that's good. Also, naming Phyrexian is kind of freaky. Oh, we hit the animate dead finally. Okay, animate dead. We have to do the grizzle brand, it's gonna get Caracas, but we're gonna draw. Okay, let's do it. Okay, we have a ton of lands, so let's start interrupting them. Let's get everything out of their hand. Like, everything's dope, awesome, awesome, awesome. Like, cool, cool, cool. Uh, we get to play grief next turn, which feels really, really good. So, here's the mistake. Uh, drawing seven cards there means a few things. One, I need to do a fetch land to be able to play this grief, to, which is the plan to kill our opponent. Two, means I can't cast snuff out for its um, like fake cost. Um, and I also like discarded all the real lands <laughs> because I didn't want to go to three. But it, but that also means I can't like just cast snuff out. So we're like, so basically that put me by, by drawing that second grizzle brand thing, which I, I definitely shouldn't have done. I'm in a situation where like, see, I'm dead to seasoned engineer or that three, one flyer. Um, especially if I don't draw a land. And so I, I also like repunted here cause I was like, okay, I need to kill him as fast as possible. So I played the second grief, but now I literally can't cast stuff out. We're like we're just we're just racing our opponent in the hopes that they don't actually, you know, do the thing. And I don't know they had Chalice of the Void. Like I don't know why I shipped the lands and not the these one drops. And then they hit the elite spellbinder. We're at three. We can put them to three and we just lose, actually. GG. Huge mistakes. Learn from my mistakes though. Um, like plan out your next few turns, especially with the deck like Reanimator. You know, it's embarrassing to show these mistakes, but it's important to understand like why they happened. So we are two and two going into the last round. 
There's no way to reanimate with this hand, so we have to put it away. There's no way to put anything in the graveyard with this hand, so we have to put it away. It's too bad that grief isn't an unmask. We got a five, and we have entomb reanimate. Let's do it old school. Let's. All right, here we go. Put some lands back. Entomb EOT, untap reanimate. Let's see what happens. All right. Entomb. It resolves. Grizzly B. Untap. I decide to cast reanimate specifically because it goes around days because of Misty Rainforest, and they concede. Yay! This hand also has a turn one, right? Because we can unmask ourselves and then reanimate Chancellor of the Annex. Um, so we're totally okay with that. I sideboard like it's Delver because we saw Misty Rainforest. Opponent most to four, however, so that helps us out pretty dramatically, and we get to reveal Chancellor of the Annex. Um, so I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to do the thing. So we unmask ourselves, hit Chancellor of the Annex, and then reanimate. See if she's good enough. Uh, and then they evoke Endurance. So, okay, so they, they misclicked here, right? So they evoke Endurance, trigger Chancel of the NX, and just let the Chancel of the NX thing resolve rather than popping the Scalding Tarn in pain. Yay, we did it. <laughs> hey, we lost because of a misclick. Oh, no, we didn't lose because of the misclick. Well, we, oh, we take those wins. It's okay. So there you have uh, Reanimator. Um, I, I made some mistakes, especially in the white initiative matchup, but the deck is very, very powerful. Uh, unfortunately, you have to play these lines where you don't have a lot of autonomy and you just have to hope your opponent doesn't have it. You know, you have to keep the hands like, like that game three against Painter, I think it was, where I had to keep like Dark Ritual and Tomb animate dead. And then if they don't have, if they have it, like we're just dead. Oh, well. Um, and hands like that are really frustrating. But the deck is very, very fun, very, very powerful. I think it has game against Delver and game against initiative which are the two boogeymen of the format um so if you want to see more videos like this of me kind of coaching and explaining my plays through leagues please be sure to like and subscribe check me out on social media links are above me and in the description thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time Bye bye